Hello, and welcome to the Cushy Cream channel. This is Jesse. Um, I'm going to be talking to you today about ignition timing and the wiring system. A lot of you guys have had some requests for me through comments and through email uh, asking me to do a segment on the wiring of these Cushman Trucksters. I understand a lot of you guys are having trouble with it. And rightfully so, these things are ridiculously complicated when it comes to the wiring system. Uh, what I'm showing you right now, this here is the actual owner's manual. This is the wiring diagram for most of the road legal uh, Cushman Trucksters, the three-wheelers, with the 18 horsepower OMC. Um, these would have been probably from 1972 to 1978. I want to say. The um, reason I'm showing you this is just in case any of you guys want to go back dead to factory wiring or anything. You want to have all the specific colors and all that fancy stuff. You're more than welcome to follow this book and do exactly what you want. Um, I'm going to show you the quick and dirty because this is a lot simpler than this makes out. Uh, next I'm going to show you point gaps. All right. This is the engine specifications for the 18 horsepower OMC. As you can see, the breaker point gap is 0 to 0. So that is going to be 20 thousandths of an inch. Or you can say 2 one hundredths, I guess, whatever floats your boat, but it's 20 thou. Uh, let's go outside and take a look. Alright, so let's start with the basics here. The power has to get to the system somehow. So, your battery, your main cable, comes in to your starter solenoid. This here, you've got a couple things here. You've got the main line coming in from the battery. You've got the main large cable that goes out toward the starter. Because you have a lot of wattage, a lot of amperage going through there. Whenever you try to turn the engine over, it's got to have a lot to crank that over. And you've also got a ground... And then you've got all your your run things. These are, when the key's on, these have power. So, once you crank it over and you start it, and it backs off, the key is in the run position, which means that these all have power. Now, I want to throw in something else here. You'll note, there's this little wire coming off over here. These, a lot of these solenoids have a grounded base plate. And if you don't have a metal contact for it when you screw it down it won't work right out of the box simply because it does not have a ground you have to wire in a secondary ground in this case I have a coating on my frame it does not get a ground I had to wire this separately it was very frustrating to figure out but this is what continuity checks are for this is why we use multimeters okay so this wire it comes in here now we're just gonna kind of jump across here. I'm sorry, I know you guys can't trace the wire with me, but I assure you, it comes right here. And this red wire, it follows up, and it hits this positive on the coil. It comes out this side, comes through here, goes into the positive on the other coil, and comes out the negative. So, if you look at it like a battery, you have a positive end, you have a negative end okay so this actually will split the voltage across these and the manual it suggests that you have this bad boy hooked up which is supposed to drop your voltage by three volts roughly and that would split your voltage uh, 12 minus 3 to 9 9 divided by 2 you'd have four and a half volts on each coil in this case it doesn't work for me um, it works a lot better for me if I don't use the resistor. So, um, I'm actually splitting 12 volts, I, I suppose. Um, and it's breaking it down into 6 to each coil. But, anyway, the wire comes out this negative end. And, of course, I've got this thing run all the way through here. But, long story short, this wire comes out and plugs in to the outside of the timer. Now, power is fed through this bolt here. 
through this insulating plastic. And you have to make sure this plastic is, is right because otherwise this will ground out on the outside of this timer. But it comes in here and it goes here. Okay. Now this is powering the condenser as well as your points. Now what happens here is the power is fed in here all the time and once this lobe pushes these points apart you can see they're separated right now then the spark bridges the gap the field collapses on these bad boys over here and it fires a spark in the only leftover place that it can bridge the gap which is inside of your piston chambers through the spark plugs so key part right there okay we talked about point gap earlier this lobe is actually a little bit off i'm going to see if i can't back the motor up just a little bit and get this dead on center i don't know if i oh there we go okay all right so you can do this by manually turning the motor over do not have the key in the on position when you do this for the love of god these things are not designed with safety in mind, so if you bridge the gap on this thing and you just happen to have fuel in the bowl, and it happens to be in gear, it will take off and run your ass over. So, let's not do that. Okay, so, that's what we're going for. That's the gap we want between the points. When the lobe has it at the top of its thing, the separated distance between these two should be this amount. 20 thou. Now I like to take the next closest one as well, and I like to take a really small one. That way, if it feels loose, then I can put this in there along with the 20 thou. You just simply stick them one over the other, and squeeze them, and you run them in there together. Okay, now you can check and see just how thick it is, okay? But once you set it up at 20 thou, and you check to make sure all of your your lines have continuity you know make sure that this plastic isn't grounding out somewhere inside of here and make sure that your engine has a good ground because if the timer does not work as a ground then none of this works the timer must function as a ground so you know I've got a very large cable here to ground out my engine um, right now it works very well because I grinded all the metal down where it contacts. But if you haven't done that, you know, check all your grounds and renew them all. Um, it is very important. Um, if you have any more questions, post them in the comments. Hopefully this helps. And we'll get back to you next time. Please subscribe. Do not forget to subscribe. The more subscribers I get, I might actually get paid to do this stuff, and then we can make a lot more of these videos. And I'd have a lot cooler, newer stuff, like not dirty timers. Alright, next time.